Do strange things happen to your accent, depending on who you're talking to? The weirdest thing I find is if someone rings me from a call centre about insurance or from the bank or something like that, and I start off talking quite normally, and then I realise they're from Wales, and so gradually over the course of the conversation my accent gets stronger and stronger until it sounds like I'm from the valleys. And goodness knows what the person on the other end of the line must be thinking. They probably think I'm, I've taken the mick or something, but it, it happens subconsciously because I'm Welsh, and so my accent converges with theirs. It's what the linguist Howard Giles referred to as accommodation. And it's partly to do with efficiency. I'm sometimes more likely to be understood if I speak in an accent more familiar to the person I'm speaking to. It's also, of course, to do with seeking approval. I'm changing my accent because I want to be accepted, to belong and to be viewed in a positive light. As the message sender in the communication, I'm trying to maintain a positive social identity. Sometimes, if I'm honest, it's also a conscious thing because I just can't be bothered to have the hassle. I know that living in the south of England, even in my own family, if I refer to my ears as years or my toothbrush as a toothbrush or a tortoise as a tortoise, it's just going to induce hysterical ridicule. So why bother? It's linguistic oppression, that's what it is. There are two basic types of accommodation then, convergence and divergence. Convergence is really common. Sometimes it's a purely regional thing, but of course other factors like class, power, race and age can also play a part. Have a think about how your accent changes if you're talking to your head teacher or your grandmother or a car mechanic or the vicar. We all change our language all the time, depending on the context. And as such, we all code switch, which just means that we alternate between two language varieties. Now that could be on a phonological level, as we've just been thinking about, but it could also be on a grammatical or a lexical level, of course. Convergence is often about decreasing the social distance between people. If someone with an RP, received pronunciation accent, tones down their accent, for instance, when they're talking to someone with an accent that has lower prestige. This is called downward convergence. On the other hand, if someone with a typically working class accent tries to eliminate some of the more obvious regional features of their accent in an attempt to present themselves in a particular light, if they're talking to an RP speaker during a job interview, for instance, <coughs> this is called upward convergence. Now, depending on the context, of course, you could find that both speakers move towards each other in terms of how they're adapting their accents. And if they do, that's called mutual convergence. A famous example of downward convergence from a different culture and language entirely is the way Emperor Hirohito of Japan adapted his speech styles following Japan's defeat in the Second World War. Hirohito spent about eight years apparently travelling the countryside and talking to everyday people in their language, adopting a much more informal style of Japanese rather than the highly formal style reserved for the Arahitogami, the living gods that Japanese emperors were considered to be. As Azuma pointed out in 1997, he was successful in utilising this more accessible image in his en endeavour to boost his popularity amongst the people. Divergence is less common and it happens when someone wants to display what Giles calls a valued distinctiveness from the other. So for instance if two rival football fans met from Liverpool and Manchester for instance then their Scouse and Mancunian accents might become more distinct not less so. If you want to look at another example of divergence, we can look at Giles and, and Welsh accents again, because Giles and Borges conducted a study in Wales in 1977 in which they looked at Welsh men who were very patriotic and were learning Welsh. And at one point they were spoken to by an English speaker with a, an obvious RP accent who referred to Welsh as a dying language that had a dismal future. And how did they respond? divergence. Their accent became stronger and they even started speaking in Welsh at times as a means of asserting their pride in their cultural and linguistic identity. 
If you found that useful, then like it, share it, and subscribe to English Gorillas.